Hello, and welcome to this video tutorial, the third in a series of tutorials about the new code review feature that was introduced with the 6.0.1 release of Rational Team Concert. This video demonstrates the code review workflow by following along with a couple of developers as they engage in a review. The information described in this video series can be found in our user guide, which is available on our wiki. To access the wiki, you will need an account on jazz.net, which is free. Links to other videos in this series can be found in the user guide, or you can simply search for Rational Team Concert Code Review in your preferred search engine. Before we get started, I'd like to point out some process preconditions that I've set for our project area, that is, the JUnit project. We require two conditions that must be satisfied before chain sets can be delivered. First, is that change sets must be associated with a work item. And secondly, at least one team member has approved the work item. In our case, the approval must be of type review. I also want to prevent a reviewer from approving a work item if they have raised must fix issues and one or more issues have not yet been resolved. This is a new precondition that was introduced in 6.0.1 specifically for code review. For more information on process preconditions, see part two of this video series, our user guide, or search jazz.net. Now let's get started. Rick is the author of a chain set. Here we see that he has the Eclipse client open. In task 77, he was asked to expand the JUnit math tests to include a test for division. Rick has added the new test to math.java and has saved his changes. In the pending changes view, he has checked his outgoing changes into a new chain set and has provided a comment. You can see too that he has associated the chain set with task 77. Let's open the task and let's go to the approvals page. Here we can see that he has added Jason and Marcus as approvers of type review on the work item. Let's click on the link to open a code review. This dialog tells us that a code review does not yet exist. Let's find out why by looking at the work item in the web browser. Rick has opened the task in his web browser. What you see is the standard work item web UI. On the approvals tab, there's a new section for code review that provides a summary of the code review itself. In order to initiate a code review, three conditions must be satisfied. One or more chain sets need to be associated with the work item, the chain sets must be completed, and a target stream where the changes will be delivered must be set. If no chain sets have been associated with the work item, a simple text message would have been displayed to instruct the user to attach a chain set to start reviewing code. However, in our case Rick has attached his chain set, but it hasn't been completed. He'll do this now off camera and then refresh his browser. OK, so the warning message has gone away. Now all that's left to do is to select a target stream. We have now met the requirements to start a review. A summary section is populated and a button appears to open code review. Now let's go over to Jason, who is about to start his review. Jason received an email notification about the new code review. Clicking on the link in the email or the button you saw on the work item brings you here. The code review web page has three components. On the left, we see a list of issues and files. The files are an aggregate of what is in the change sets associated with the work item. So in this case, we see two files, alltests.java and math.java. Underneath those are a listing of issues. These are problems that reviewers have raised. So it appears that Marcus has already started his review. In the center is the Compare Editor, the standard Compare Editor you would see in any RTC comparison UI. On the right hand side is the Before state, showing what the file looked like before the changes, and on the left hand side is the After state, what it looks like when the change sets are applied. Look here, Jason has received notification that a new issue has been raised. Let's refresh the browser to see what has changed. 
Ah, he's created another issue, this time on math.java. So with code review, you get near real-time notification of change events. For example, you will be notified if new issues are raised, existing issues are updated, or new change sets are applied to the work item. Let's look at the issue on all tests. Jason can open it from the compare editor or from within the navigator. This is the issue editor. An issue consists of a summary, the line number where the issue was found, and a type. It also identifies who raised the issue, in this case Marcus. He didn't specify a type, which is fine, but Jason notices that Marcus did not identify it as a must fix. The vector tests have been commented out and won't be executed. That definitely needs to be addressed, so he will mark it as a must fix now. You will also add a comment and click on save. Notice when the issue is saved, two activities are added to the event feed at the bottom. Any updates to the issue are logged here for traceability. Also note that tagging an issue as must fix changes the icon in the navigator and compare editor, so you can easily identify them. And remember, in our workflow, must fix issues will prevent the work item from being approved and the chain sets from being delivered until they have been resolved. Let's cancel the editor and have a look at the code. Jason notices there's a missing copyright statement. He will open an issue for this one. In code review, we have two types of issues. General issues that apply to all files or subset of files, and those that are tied to a line of code. In this case, Jason opens a general issue that applies to all the files in the review, and he marks this one as a must fix. Let's continue with the review. In math.java, Marcus is asking for javadoc. He raised it on line 9 and identified it as a best practice. Fair enough. Let's close this. In math.java, Jason sees that a single method has been added. He notices that the name is a bit different than the other methods, so we will add an issue. It's minor, but he will ask that the name be more consistent. It's not a must fix. It's probably a best practice. Jason then notices there's a method that's missing. There should be a test module method, so he opens a must fix issue for this. Now you can see that there are two issues on line 9 the add test for module and the add javadoc. Well, Jason has finished his review. We'll come back once Rick has addressed the issues that have been raised. Some time has elapsed and Rick has been busy responding to the issues found. The workflow for Rick, the author, is very simple. To add a new chain set to the review, all he has to do is associate the chain set to the work item. He will also resolve the issues he has addressed. These events result in notifications being sent to the reviewers. Here, Jason has opened the work item. He looks at the approvals tab in the code review section on that tab and sees there's an extra chain set. In the summary section he sees that five issues have been resolved and there are no unresolved must fix issues. He also sees that Marcus has been reviewing the files. He has looked at math.java and all tests but has not yet looked at the vector class. Jason will now go back into code review and have a look at the changes. First, we see the general issue about the missing copyright. Rick has resolved it, and yes, we see the copyright statements at the top of the file. Now let's walk through the files and see what's happening. All tests had one issue. A line of code needed to be uncommented, and that's been done. Notice that the issues activity log shows that all tests was updated and that Rick had marked the issue as resolved. Notice too that with the addition of several lines of copyright at the top of the file, the line number here was automatically updated. As well, the issue marker was repositioned properly. OK, let's finish this up. Let's move on to math.java. All three issues have been resolved. 
we can see that javadoc has been added, that the test for modulo is there, and that the name of the test method has been updated for consistency. Jason is satisfied with the changes and goes back to the work item to complete his portion of the workflow. This really just involves approving the work item. Jason saves the work item, and as far as he is concerned, Rick is ready to deliver. This concludes our demonstration of performing a code review in Rational Team Concert. Please feel free to submit your comments, questions, or feedback. Thank you for watching.